Uh, gonna have to chop this video up because of the 10 minute uh, loop required by YouTube so uh, basically went over the picture interval um, in the quiet period in the trigger um, if you choose the default setting for the manufacturer uh, that is gonna be set this uh, take three pictures per trigger uh, with the one second pause and no delay between triggers uh, you do have different camera modes for the camera. Uh, you have a time-lapse mode, um, rapid fire, or uh, one called quick set. Uh, quick set basically is a, has three main, basically hunter features. One's trail, one's scrape, and one's feeder. Um, and uh, let's see, from my notes, those would be, um, the trail mode is three pictures. Uh, every one second with no quiet period. Uh, the scrape would be uh, five pictures. Uh, every event, uh, rapid fire, and uh, no quiet period. Uh, that's pretty close to, to the uh, mode I set my camera up for. Um, I usually shoot ten pictures per event. And basically an event is... Uh, any time that the camera detects heat or motion it's going to trigger so they call that an event um, and then you have a feeder event that would be uh, three pictures uh, with a five second uh, wait and a 15 second quiet period so if you had a lot of animals in front of a deer feeder or something um, obviously they're going to just be triggering the camera just you know off and on over and over so that you know maybe you want to have a little time left on your card to pick that mode um, if you want to set your camera for time lapse, um, you basically have you can turn it on in the morning or at night, or you can have it on all day. Uh, you have um, basically a starting and ending times you would set on the camera when you want to come on and go off, and the interval between how many between the pictures when it takes a shot, and you can set that between one uh, second, fifteen seconds. Um, 30 minutes or one hour I believe and then there's also uh, a night mode setting where um, if you choose the default it basically is the best combination that's going to balance the image quality for the shutter speed and the flash range um, sometimes at night in your pictures you may see some blurring from an animal so if, if, if you are getting that you may want to choose a, a, a little bit uh, you know maybe or either a uh, higher quality uh, image setting and basically the high quality setting is uh, a reduced flash range so it's not going to shoot as much flash out it's going to try to give you a little bit better picture um, you have fast shutter if you want to choose that setting and that's a reduced motion blur uh, reduced flash range so actually maybe that would probably be one of the better settings you're going to have to experiment with this because uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff on this camera so you know try to best test this and see how it's going to work for you and then last you have a max range for night mode and that would be increased range reduced image quality that's going to shoot the, the IR lights even further out to try to at least capture those animals not coming close to the camera so um, you can do that um, another setting uh, well actually need to, I need to go over how many pictures the camera will take um, if you want to set this up uh, the camera has the ability to shoot um, basically a camera, uh, a picture every second, uh, three seconds, five seconds, ten seconds, or rapid fire, which I use. It just goes and goes and goes. Um, one thing you may want to think about setting your camera up on is called the code lock. Um, this is a, um, it's a four-digit security code. Um, so if somebody was to encounter your camera and take it this would at least allow them not to use the camera or make it very tough I mean the security code uh, just basically presents unauthorized use of your camera um, you can also set a user label up and this is going to show up on every picture that's taken uh, it's going to be up to 16 characters um, I have quite a few cameras so I like to actually name the cameras and um, maybe their location or any other type of uh, you know information you want to put on there um, let's see uh, 
basically um, in the main menu of the camera that's going to allow you to arm the camera uh, one feature there's a walk test and I, I would definitely highly recommend using this setting this is going to help you uh, be able to see the detection zone of the camera as you walk the camera will flash a light and it's basically telling you that's where it's picking up motion so you may want to get some um, small flags from like a hardware store to just put in the ground uh, to maybe map out where your detection zone is it's going to change from how the weather is uh, between the warmer environment uh, a colder environment what time of the year so um, you know just experiment with this if you have a lot of foliage in front of the camera and the sensitivity is high you know you're going to have a lot of misfires so you may have to clear some brush if it's in a very open environment like right behind me uh, and the sun's out you're going to get a lot of pictures from uh, just the heat coming off the ground so um, you know just experiment with it. it it's all trial by error and uh, you know it doesn't take long to learn how these cameras work um, let's see uh, what else is you know interesting um, basically the the camera will um, let's say back to the walk test you know if you're if you're setting up your camera and you put it on that and you kind of figure out where the detection zone is and you're ready to go on to your next camera or head back home um, if the camera doesn't uh, get any type of activity for two minutes it's going to go ahead and arm itself for the settings you set your camera up for so that's a great way of knowing hey my camera's seen me you know it's I mean, if I put bait down or I sit in front of the camera I know it's going to pick that animal up so I can go ahead and head off and know my camera's going to set itself uh, so that's a really great mode to use um, you know basically when I, uh, I get to the camera you can um, uh, you want to hit the OK button that'll basically tell you information like um, how many pictures the camera's taken uh, how much room is still left on that card and what the battery life is uh, that's all information you probably want to write down and keep a log on um, I even uh, one thing not just marking my cameras basically you know learning about the life of the camera and how it works uh, I label all my um, compact flash cards so I can make sure they're always running correctly if I have a problem with one I know when I bought it and uh, you know I can get that back to the manufacturer to get a new one or figure out getting it fixed um, um, one other information uh, there's a camera info button that will basically tell you the firmware version of the camera and what the serial number is um, I actually um, I write the serial number on the back of my cameras and what model camera it is uh, this RC60 it's one of the first ones and it actually doesn't say it's an RC60 um, of course I can tell by the, the black lens but you know when you got a lot of cameras sometimes you forget so uh, you know I have on the back serial number and, and the model number uh, the firmware version firmware version is very uh, important you can get those downloaded for free uh, firmware conics you just need an empty uh, compact flash card uh, you download that uh, firmware update and place it on the card and you know when you get back to your new camera uh, you have the camera off you put that blank card in and uh, it'll it'll update your camera and you're ready to go um, let's see uh, uh, when you get the cameras uh, they do come with software called buck view basically it's mapping and image management software uh, I've never used the software because I have used a Macintosh so it doesn't run on that so hopefully Reconix will make a Mac version for us guys um, that's probably the key points of this camera um, they're no longer made from Reconix anymore but there's still a ton on the market and uh, you know this is a $600 camera when it came out and this is about 550 so there's still a lot of them out there they're long-term working cameras so hopefully they'll fall on price and uh, on the used market uh, or for some of the online dealers that still may have them and uh, you know uh, I like to try one of their newer cameras their hyper fire line but uh, I don't have one currently so if anybody wants to send me one I'll be happy to test it but uh, you know I hope that kind of helps you uh, out on how these cameras are set up and future videos will go into mounting the camera and you know uh, teaching you how to, to use them better out there for your uses so thanks for joining me thanks for support and thanks for watching we'll see you next time bye bye